Hi and welcome to this tutorial on depth edited HSQC NMR spectroscopy and firstly I'd like to say thanks to all the subscribers and all the people who have written comments because this is something I've been meaning to do for a long time. So here we go. Okay what we see before us here is a normal CPD carbon 13 spectrum which you'd see in any synthetic organic chemistry laboratory. They're fantastic, they'll show up all the carbons. But to be honest I tend not to use this technique that often these days. Instead of running a normal carbon spectrum, I tend to run uh, what's called a adept Q. Now, adept um, is shown here. It's a distortionless enhancement by a proton transfer. Basically, anything that's attached to a proton will get um, transferred to the carbon and enhanced, and you'll see it. And it's a it's much easier technique. And it also looks at the coupling concentrating carbon and hydrogen. And in doing that, it can you can add phase to the final spectrum. So if you look here on this depth, you've, you'll notice that the CH and CH3s are now pointing upwards and the CH2s are pointing down. Now that's not the whole story, because what I tend to do is actually run a depth Q, which is, is like a depth, but with a quaternary detection. So you can actually pick up quaternary carbons as well. So you've got a full complement of carbons, everything you need to look for. So that's a quick overview of the carbon spectrum. And that will be projected onto the uh, F1 domain of your 2D spectrum, which we'll move on to now. Okay, let's have a look at this small molecule, menthol. Now, in organic chemistry, we tend to do um, proton and carbon-13. And I'll just label that as organic uh, correlation. So you, you've got um, proton, uh, carbon, sorry, here, carbon-13. And on the bottom, you've got a proton. So if you look to this, put the spectra up for them, this is what you presented with initially, you'd have your proton spectrum on the top in the F2 dimension and in the F1 dimension here in the y-axis of your, you've got your, your depth, so it's nice and resolved. Okay, so let me just get rid of that text a second. In bioorganic or uh, biochemistry or even biology, you'll look at uh, nitrogen 15 against proton to look at those amide um, signals and indeed that's, that's what I do quite a lot of looking at protein uh, structures but I also do a lot of small molecule work with with small molecules similar to this as well where I'm looking at carbon and proton correlated spectra so what would it look like you just done your um, experiment it's probably took about half an hour to run with a small sample and you presented with something like this well initially you think, oh, that's good, it's nice nice and well resolved. Actually, we should just point out something here, actually. This is a HSQC, isn't it? Now, HMQC also exists, and organic chemists used to use HMQCs all the time. Now, HMQC is just heteronuclear multiple quantum coherence spectra, where HSQC is heteronuclear single quantum coherence spectra. Now, the multiple quantum um, a bit if you will, gives rise to some couplings on on the, uh, the carbon axis, on the F1 axis here. So if you compared the HSQC to the HMQC, you probably see something that looked a bit like that. Now you see a major difference now, the, the lines look a bit broader. Now these are a lot quicker and uh, you get stronger signals, so that's probably why organic chemists tended to use HMQC a lot. But if you look around this region here, we just have a look around here. You can see we're getting a lot of overlap. Now this broadening is actually caused by a uh, coupling of the carbon to the proton and that, that is not really resolved very well. So it looks so imagine that one's a bit like a triplet and it'll look like that rather than being a nice sharp peak for that carbon signal there. Now this axis anyway isn't isn't the best resolution uh, you can get in the world. But even so this is getting a bit ridiculous really. If you think about this is only a small molecule and you're starting to see a bit of overlap there. So that's why um, we tend to use HSQC now. When pulse flow gradients uh, came in uh, this revolutionized that anyway and you get this much sharper resolution. The only downside with HSQC over HMQC is that you do lose a bit of signal to noise. But if you've got a good nice strong sample you're not too bothered about that. Now this is HSQC, I've not told you how to interpret it yet, because I'm a bit concerned, we've got we've got depth here, or a depth Q, there's no quaternary carbons in this compound, but if we have a depth or a depth Q on the side here, 
we're not actually getting the benefit of that here, apart from we'd have to read it off and stuff like that. Well, there is a technique called uh, Adept Edited HSQC, which I use all the time. So it's Adept Ed HSQC. Okay, this is a fantastic technique. It just takes just as long. And if I just turn that one off and put this one on, you can see now that the the two D spectrum is actually um, showing some phase differences between CH twos and CHs. If I just label these up, I've got text here somewhere. Okay, so you've got CH threes and CHs uh, pointing up on the depth, and CH twos and Quaternary is pointing down. Now remember. This is a proton observed technique. You will not see um, any carbons in this 2D spectrum if it's not connected to a proton. It has to be connected to a proton to see. So you, carbonyl signals won't show up and stuff like that. Nitriles, nothing like that will show up. Okay, so, but luckily in, in menthol we don't have any quaternary carbons anywhere to deal with. Now one of the interesting things for you, let's choose a different colour pen actually. One of the interesting things for uh, HSQC and depth editor HSQC that I love uh, about this technique is that if you've got AB pairs, if you've got, and we look at this part of the molecule here, let's just draw that on in blue. You've got CH2s and you've got a cyclohexane ring there as well, so you've got, you've got some differences between the protons, you've got the axial and you've got the equatorial protons there. Now, if you look at that by uh, in the 1D spectrum, they'll be hard to tell which where these CH2s come. You look at the HSQC, and especially the depth edited one, and you actually can spot, if you look here, AB pairs. If I draw lines in like that. Because they're connected to the same, if I draw a dotted line here, they're actually connected to the one carbon. So those two hydrogens, one pointing up, one pointing down, are connected to the one. So isn't that fantastic? That's absolute fantastic use of this technique. And I use that all the time for spotting for AP pairs. Because undoubtedly you'll have a carbon, uh, sorry, a chiral molecule, and you'll have these, uh, if you've got a cyclohexane ring system where you've got this conformational restriction, then you're bound to have something like this where you've got one axis and one equatorial. So that's really good for spotting them. And you know the CH2s because in this case the red. Now don't don't think that all red um, cross beaks are going to be uh, CH2s and all black ones are going to be CH3s. It's entirely up to you to choose the colours for the positive and the negative peaks. Okay, so I choose red and, and black uh, for my different colours. You can have blue and black, you can have whatever colours you want. You can have green and, and pink if you wanted. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. So let's have a, a look at some of the detail in in this now. I've mentioned the AB pairs. I'll just delete them without deleting anything else. Excellent. Okay, so in these crowded regions here as well, so if we just have a quick look at this, this region here, it gets very difficult to actually um, assign that using just a 1D proton. And indeed, if you look to the cosy, that would be very crowded there. You'd have to do that quite high resolution just to try and pick them out. Now, this is a, these are actually predicted spectra, and these are available um, on Epistemio to download if you want to have a go at these yourself. And I'll put a printout of, of this um, my drawing for this 2D spectrum as well, so you can play around with that. Now, the way to read a HSQC is rather simple. You just get, I'll draw a line in here, you take your carbon, whichever one you've assigned, you've either assigned the carbon or the proton, and you basically just read from one all the way across. So that CH3 there, you've got the um, chemical shift in the carbon for that, and you can just read straight up, you do a 90 degree uh, straight up, and you can see that these CH3s here are actually these ones here. And you do that for every single one. So you go through and so on and so on. So you'd find that they use with these CH3s here. You use straighter lines than I'm using. And indeed, if you look at these here, this is really interesting. Look how crowded this region is here. And you can straight away, you can, you can identify that that one there 
is that CH3 there? That's CH2, I mean. It's actually one of them. It's one of those AB pairs. And look, at, look at the chemical shift difference between those two pairs. You probably get that out of a cosy, but have I picked the right one? No, I've picked the wrong one. There we are. So it's that one there. Okay. And also, this one has got one, two, three. It's actually got, it's got two different AB um, protons, and it's actually got um, a, a CH there as well. Okay, so all within that multiplet there, you've got three different protons, and you can easily resolve them on this HSQC spectrum. Okay, so in order to characterize it, you can go through a cosy first, or you can do what I'm doing here and just, just read it off. But really, it helps if you've already assigned one of the spectra. Okay, and that's basically how you read off the HSQC in this case. We'll do another example in a minute. Okay, so I'll just clean this up a little bit. So let's have a quick go at trying to do this then. So this one's easy to spot. This one here would be this one here. So let's label that up. So the carbonyl proton would be easy to spot. And you'd be able to get that from um, the, the 1D spectrum. And from that 1D spectrum, you'll then assign... Uh, these two based on the cause it. So once you've got that, so you can assign, so you've got that from proton, you can then assign that from the carbon, but you'll probably be able to assign that from the carbon anyway because it's got the, the largest chemical shift there. Next, I would look at the cause like I say, and I'd have a look for this one and this one. Now, these would be quite easy to interpret now because we've got um, one's a CH and one's a CH2, so you should be able to find them. Uh, quite straightforward. So have a look for some cosy couplings for them. Doesn't matter whether you know which one's which. And then just look at both of them on, on the uh, proton spectrum on the HSQC and see if we can find them. So number three there is level number three, this one. Let's have a look see if we can find that CH. So basically it's going to be one of these ones on this side here. Okay? So it's going to be one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them, or one of them. Now because it's it's not too far away to that carbonyl centre. There's going to be some electron withdrawing effects going on here as well. So a good guess for that would be this one here. Okay. And indeed, if you did that on the um, cosy, you'd probably find that you did get some, you had some uh, correlation there between that one and this one here as well. Okay, so we've leveled that up as number three. Now because we've got this inductive effect around here anyway, so it's not very big, but it's, it's big enough to make a difference, we can have a look at that CH2. Now indeed, if we look at that CH2, then the next one, uh, the one with the highest chemical shift, if you will, is this AB pattern here. So I'd label that up as 5. This is just guessing at the moment, so I'd, I'd use this based on chemical shift data around this carbonyl centre for now. But I also go had bounced backwards and forwards between the cosy and, and stuff like that. Okay, so the next one I'd look at would be this one with the chemical shift. Now I have to I'd be guessing at this stage now because it's all getting a bit crowded. So if this is number two that I'm looking for, well we've already found three. And three is this one. So what was the next coupling for that in the cosy spectrum? If it gets a bit crowded, maybe you can pick that out of a toxy. So the next one for that, um, for number two there, actually comes at these ones here. And that's just based really on the on the Corsi data. So I'm bouncing backwards and forwards between the HSQC and the Corsi or the Toxi just to give me some idea of where how these are coupling to each other. Now it's all right for a, a quite simple molecule like this to do that. And that turns out to be number two there. Now by default, we've only got one CH2 left there. And that's these ones here. So these are number one. Now, when you when you are bouncing around and, and guessing the best you can, it's all right to have an educated guess and then correct yourself later. Uh, that's certainly I, I I'll, I'll do that quite a lot. I'll just uh, if it's there, and then I'll go back to the cause and check it. It'll be wrong, so I'll I'll carry on. And I tend to label the the peaks up um, as I'm going along as well. I don't tend to draw these lines on like this. Uh, I just tend to uh, write, so that's number, what do we say this one was, this number four. I just put number four down the side there like that, so I've got a good visual map of what it is on the molecule there. 
Okay, so this one, um, this CH here that we're looking for, well, that should have a good cross peak here we're looking for. We've got how many CH have we got left? We've got um, CH there, and we've also got this isopropyl group. Well, that isopropyl group, we know we've got CH3 there. We've got two of them, and we've got two of them there. So that's the isopropyl CH. So where does that um, carbon, I mean that proton, sorry, couple in the cosy spectrum? So that's what I'd go there. I'd have a look at that and see where that comes in the cosy spectrum, see which one of these two is coupled into. It's either this one or this one. And if you were to have a look at that in the cosy, you'll actually find that the, the one it's coupling to is this one here. Okay, so that, the this signal here actually comes from proton number 8 and by default that leaves that as proton number 6 and this one which we ignored is the other CH3 at the top CH3 7 so although that looks, looks a bit scruffy at the moment if we try and tidy it up a little bit okay it looks a little bit like this um, if we put all the the numbers in for the the uh, carbons there. So that's it basically, you just read it off and read vertically, read it off uh, horizontally and then read vertically to get the assignments and look out for those um, CH2 pairs, uh, they're fantastic, those AB pairs. So that's menthol. There's going to be a part two to this tutorial where we'll look at the tripeptide that was used in the uh, nausea tutorial. There's also going to be downloadable worksheets, as I mentioned earlier, from Epistemio, if you want to just sign up, even if you just want to download the worksheets, just um, just pop along to epistemio.com and, and they'll be there, together with some other uh, useful information and all the other videos and, and worksheets you can get. So that's it for now. Bye for now.